thank you for presenting, uh, dear chairman. Um, this uh, good day, dear participants, online participants. Uh, I think your day is good day today. Um, so my talk will be about some uh, bulk and surface effect in uh, uh, magnetostriction material, so-called galphenol. It's material based on iron and gallium um, elements. Um, me and uh, Anatoly uh, and Sergey, my colleagues, uh, are um, instrumental scientists. We work uh, in uh, research, Newton Research Center in Dubna, Russia. Usually we do not prepare um, and synthesize uh, um, materials, but we um, applied diffraction methods, uh, including neutron diffraction, uh, to study complex structural effect in uh, different materials. The last five years, uh, we applied neutron diffraction, successfully applied neutron diffraction to recheck and uh, to to open, uh, to discover new phase uh, uh, conditions in a um, series of uh, magnetostrictive materials, magnetostrictive alloys, mostly based on iron. Um, this talk is devoted to um, surface and uh, bulk effects in, uh, in general in materials, in alloys. Uh, by other words, uh, how it's important to separate uh, surface effects uh, and uh, bulk effects in your structure during your study. Next, next slide. Okay, I remind you that uh, magnetostriction, uh, that uh, galphenol uh, have magnetostrictions, giant magnetostriction, and uh, this is change of uh, dimensions. Uh, um, during uh, process of uh, applying of magnetic field. And um, galphenols, uh, uh, among other magnetostrictive materials, uh, uh, are not fragile. So it increases the uh, number of possible, um, uh, possible uh, application of this material. It can be, they can use uh, as sensors, as motors, and even uh, uh, as uh, energy collectors, collectors materials. Uh, on this uh, picture, uh, you see how dimensions um, of uh, single crystal uh, galphenol change under uh, applied magnetic field. Uh, galphenols uh, based on iron, uh, iron gallium alloy um, have two peaks of uh, to maximum of magnetostriction. You can see from this picture it's about uh, close to 90 uh, percent of gallium and 27 percent of gallium. Uh, this is a puzzle and uh, um, scientists try to solve uh, uh, why it is uh, and so and one of the key uh, for understanding this is uh, phase content, uh, structural phase content uh, in these uh, materials. Um, in galphenols, um, there are, can be many uh, phases. Uh, most of them, uh, this is cubic phases, uh, ordered uh, with large parameter and uh, many others um, uh, disordered uh, phases, a uh, small parameter, it also ordered with, uh, Smaller parameter than, uh, than for example, DO3. Okay, uh, among scientists who study uh, this kind of alloys uh, um, or, or alloys, uh, some abbreviature are very spread. Uh, you can find it, uh, it's called DO3, A2, A1, L12. For example, um, DO3, it's, it's ordered phase. Um, gallium and iron uh, atoms ordered inside of unit cell. And um, A2 already is ordered, L12 ordered. Uh, connection between parameters uh, uh, of this phase mm, 
is as on this uh, equation. So, uh, for example, uh, uh, two a two parameters of disordered phase. It's e e almost equal to one uh, ordered parameter of the O three phase. Um, many scientists uh, in uh, recent decade uh, have found that uh, that in by by, by uh, studying of uh, this material uh, XRD by XRD box, by X-ray diffraction, they have found that in uh, diapason from 90 to uh, 27 percent of gallium. Uh, this compound uh, um, consists of uh, two phases. Uh, so this is uh, sorry. Uh, this is uh, the part of diffraction pattern uh, of measured uh, uh, sample ferrum, uh, ninety percent of gallium. Uh, it can be for ferrum twenty-seven percent of gallium. It's between 90 and 27% uh, of gallium. You can find the same picture. You can see it from here. Uh, so, and we uh, see here um, a splitting of the um, main peak. Uh, it's interpreted as uh, coexisting of DO3 phase and A2 phase. Uh, and scientists, uh, by using this information, try to explain um, effects in. Uh, um, in the Gulf Uh Here I would like to say that XRD remains uh, the main method to study crystal structure uh, and uh, mm, so it means that most of scientists use it, use it as etalon. Uh, some mm, scientists from China recently um, uh, obtain some new information. We have uh, observed um, uh, so-called modified DO3 phase. Uh, it's quite complicated to, <laughs> to control this uh, unit. Um, uh, so, um, if uh, atoms of gallium moved to other positions, um, it's like here, this is original DO3 phase, we have uh, see on electron diffraction from single crystal new superlative peaks, uh, and uh, it looks like we have found some spots from this uh, uh, phase on electron diffraction uh, patterns. Um, it's uh, worth noting that. Uh, mm, talking about uh, this phase, uh, first observation of this was found uh, by um, prof Dr. Lagrassa, but then uh, next his uh, uh, paper, he declined this uh, assumption, this, um, uh, this phase. Um, also in uh, further in my talk, I will mm, call modified DO3 phase, sometimes a L6O phase. Uh, uh, this is the same phases, uh, it's just uh, abbreviation for uh, tetragonal phase. If you look here um, mm, on this cell, uh, modified the O3 phase, if we construct new cell, it will be tetragonal uh, cell. So, um, in, in, uh, among scientists, uh, uh, usually use both abbreviation. But we prefer uh, modified DO3 phase because it's easy to uh, imagine uh, how uh, it uh, 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 construction of this cell. And uh, recently, um, this mm, in the iron 27 gallium, um, also this kind of phase, modified phase, uh, was uh, discovered by electron diffraction uh, method. So, um, scientists even support their uh, observation uh, by um, DFT method, by calculation methods. Uh, so, they um, have shown that uh, transformation from disordered phase to ordered phase uh, via ordered DO3 phase with large parameters should be go for uh, 
modified uh, DO3 phase. It's energetically favorable. Uh, and then um, all mm, diffraction patterns are which uh, before were interpreted as uh, A2 and DO3, DO3, not modified, but usual DO3 phase, they um, started to call that uh, um, broadening and additional and you know, splitting of this peak. This is result of um, mm, uh, non-infusions uh, from modified DO3 phase. So they totally change um, interpretation of the patterns. Uh, you can see here also broadening and splitting. They also interpret this like uh, broadening uh, it speaks from modified DO3 phase. So it's interesting that from our results, we have never, uh, from our neutron diffraction results, we have never observed uh, this kind of information. We have never uh, seen uh, peak splitting, uh, in, even in high resolution, very high resolution measurements. Um, and we have never mm, uh, seen uh, super superlatus peaks uh, uh, from modified DO3 phase. It should appear uh, because uh, it uh, sells quite big and has additional peaks. We have now observed it, but uh, uh, we easily observe uh, superlatus peaks uh, from DO3 phase uh, and they have seen it, uh, some traces of this uh, even uh, as diffusion background even for compounds where uh, before on the way to phase, A to phase, disorder phase, uh, was um, found. So to understand, to get better on this problem, uh, we decided to, um, to make different experiments uh, with the same samples. Uh, X-ray, high resolution, uh, X-ray thermodiffraction experiments, at the same time uh, neutron thermodiffraction experiments, and with uh, uh, similar sample, um, high resolution X-ray and uh, uh, neutron diffraction experiments. Um, experiments uh, have, uh, I, I would like to say that uh, uh, all experiments have done, uh, thermodiffraction experiments well done, uh, have done on the same sample, but cut it on three parts. And uh, high resolution experiments uh, also were done on the same sample, but it wasn't cut, it was uh, the same for all measurements. So uh, experiments uh, were done at uh, our station, uh, uh, our instrument, neutron diffractometer in Dubna, uh, and uh, X-ray diffraction experiments were done uh, on analytical uh, diffractometer equipment with positions, high phase efficiency position sensitive detector uh, with copper and cobalt uh, tubes. Uh, experiments are, uh, were in a quite similar uh, condition thermal diffraction experiments. So we used uh, um, vacuum furnace for neutrons and vacuum furnace for yeah, X, X ray. Vacuum was about uh, 10 minus 3 millibars and we heated up to uh, 850 Celsius. Here you see holders, the sample. So, uh, initial state of uh, the compounds uh, in thermal diffraction experiments uh, was already different. From XRD, we have seen only A2 phase, and uh, in the neutron diffraction, we have seen uh, only a uh, two uh, uh, A2 phase with uh, some amount of uh, um, of uh, impurity, aluminum oxide. But in neutron diffraction, we have uh, obtained only uh, DO3 phase. Um, fundamental peaks, the main peaks, I coincide for A2 and DO3 phase almost coincide, uh, so because of uh, their parameters, it's quite close. Sorry. Uh, quite close, you can see it from, from here. Um, then uh, you, you see on this picture evolution diffraction patterns from uh, uh, room temperature up to high temperature uh, for XRD and for neutron diffraction. 
So uh, if uh, heating up uh, looks like similar for XRD and neutron diffraction with some difference in detail, but cooling down, it mm, looks uh, already dramatic different. Uh, we can see it better from um, analysis of peak intensities. Uh, from analysis of behavior of peak intensities, I remind that uh, peak intensities mm, of characteristic phases uh, uh, are proportional to phase uh, content, uh, which these peaks belong. Uh, so um, this is heating up for XRD and neutron diffraction, and this is uh, cooling down from XRD and neutron diffraction. Uh, here we see the, what kind of difference we see here. Uh, first, um, of course, it's initial state of the phases. Uh, then uh, we see that um, transition between phases are more smooth uh, um, uh, for neutron diffraction and uh, more sharp for XRD. Uh, the main phase um, A2 uh, is uh, exist still around 500 degree of Celsius, but main phase uh, due to diffraction fully disappear in uh, close to this region. Temperature phase transitions shift about 20 degrees of Celsius um, to XRD on XRD um, patterns. So and also we see difference. Uh, we see difference in finish phase, uh, it is B2 phase, ordered uh, cubic phase, and again, disordered cubic phase uh, um, in XRD. Um, so, um, also we see plateau for behavior of A2 phase and uh, uh, going down uh, of intensity for B B2 phase. So, it's uh, Basically, it should, uh, intensity should go, uh, should go down because of uh, there are some thermal effects uh, or, mm, and uh, some others interesting effects, but it should not be on plateau. Uh, and uh, very different behavior uh, if we cooling down. Uh, again, we see plateau for XRD and the same A2 phase and uh, phase separation uh, uh, for um, from neutron diffraction experiments. Behavior of parameters uh, of the cell also very different. Uh, this is from neutron diffraction for main phase um, D03 or B2 here uh, and uh, um, for XRD diffraction. What is interesting that and Five minutes? I have 30 minutes. Sorry. I have 30 minutes of talk. Uh, what is interesting from uh, this study uh, that uh, a finish phase of um, mm, uh, in a different experiment uh, and in different uh, mm, surface of uh, the sample um, not phases on and not coincides. Uh, for example, if we look at up, um, we take information from up th uh, of uh, the sample, which contact directly with uh, uh, vacuum, uh, we uh, see that uh, uh, we observe only A2 uh, disordered phase. And uh, if we uh, investigate surface which were in contact with sample holder, we see uh, two phases, uh, A2 and L12, uh, disordered or, or ordered. It's quite similar uh, result from neutron diffraction, but instead of disordered uh, phase, it was ordered, DO3. So it's also here phase separation, uh, DO3 and L1 to phase. By EDX uh, analysis, we have found that this, uh, this uh, surface is uh, gallium deficient. So, but backside was quite close to initial condition. Um, also, uh, XRD uh, on based on copper uh, tube um, 
have a very small penetration depth and uh, it have great impact on uh, um, behavioral sample parameter. So um, mm, it, it's better to say that it doesn't have on exactly on sample parameter. It uh, has uh, mm, surface layers uh, have um, has uh, strong impact on uh, obtained results. So, for example, this strange behavior of uh, A2 parameters uh, is explained by um, by disappearance of gallium oxide and uh, as a result uh, losses of gallium content in contact with va vacuum. So, parameters of the cell goes down. So, as it was uh, found before in other researchers. Uh, also, mm, mm, Plato of the mm, in X, XRG data also explained by uh, screening of the films, but as well as um, other debate temperature uh, uh, due to uh, gallium deficient phase uh, gallium uh, iron gallium uh, alloy uh, has another uh, uh, debate. Uh, temperature parameters. So, and uh, uh, here you see calculation uh, for behavior of, of thermal parameters uh, uh, in dependence on temperature. This is influence of temperature parameters in, in peak intensity. It was calculated for different temperature. This one is uh, for gallium deficient months. Okay, uh, so um, here I would like to say uh, some uh, uh, some conclusions. Uh, um, uh, first of all, uh, this is um, be by neutron diffraction, X-ray diffraction. We have obtained different uh, uh, different results. So uh, we have observed different phase transition uh, on surface and uh, inside of their uh, sample, bulk sample. Uh, gallium loss from the sample surface uh, explain the formation of A2 phase. Um, and uh, temperature for all transitions uh, was shift uh, about on 20 degrees of Celsius uh, lower. So, um, for XRD data, um, it means uh, uh, that uh, uh, new firm gallium phase nucleates on the surface area and grows deeper into the bulk. Um, because of um, time of the, um, I have limitation in time, so I have only five minutes and maybe it will be some questions. Uh, uh, so I just uh, shortly say results about high resolution uh, investigations. So again, we, uh, by XRD we have seen broadening and splitting of the peaks as it was found uh, before uh, other scientists and neutron diffraction we have seen along peaks. Um, uh, we applied uh, for XRD uh, profile matching and obtained that uh, uh, peaks can be fitted only with two uh, phases. So, moreover, cleaned uh, sample have shown uh, this phase just after cleaning of surface. And this phase, new phase, uh, its content rises with uh, uh, exposition of sample in air. Uh, moreover, that uh, in uh, exposition for 45 days, we have obtained new additional phase uh, uh, by analysis of peak shapes. Third phase. But in neutrons, it was still alone. So here, uh, there are some parameters. It may be not so important now. We applied uh, for this research also another radiation, cobalt anode, and have found that uh, this phases uh, be detected less uh, additional phases that it means that it means that penetration uh, deeper um, that these phases just concentrated on the surface of the sample here you see some um, 
um, some calculations, uh, some simulation of uh, modified DO3 patterns. Uh, so it just show that uh, we, in any case, we have to see uh, super lattice peaks, even if uh, uh, even if uh, this is nano inclusions. So it means uh, we have to see some traces, maybe uh, big complex background, but even the very high statistic, 4,000 uh, seconds per point, 0 0.12 degrees, we didn't see any traces of this. Uh, so this is end of uh, my talk. And uh, mm, what is interesting is that we have uh, observed uh, uh, additional phases uh, in a Polish sheet uh, and collect sample um, and uh, they evolve over time after cleaning uh, so we can conclude that uh, modified DO3 phase which was used to explain some effects in uh, magnet restriction alloys uh, do not exist in uh, uh, recoverable volume fraction so uh, its volume fraction material is too low to affect bulk physical properties of such magnet restriction effect. So, and of course, that only complex study of X-ray and neutron diffraction makes it possible to deter determine correctly the phase composition in the surface layer and the bulk of the alloy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. You. And when you say less ordered phases, um, are they completely different phases or there are, there, there, there are too much defects in those phases? That's why you call them less ordered. Uh, is, it, is it clear what I said? When I uh, uh, say ordered phases... You, you may start, no problem. I mean, you, you, mm, may okay. you may sit and to, 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 walk, to talk easier. When I call ordered phases, it means that uh, uh, in uh, some positions of uh, this cell, uh, for example, some atoms, you will find with more possibility than others. So if it's disorder phase, uh, so it's random distribution of their atoms uh, on, uh, between positions. Basically, yeah, I mean, crystal structure is same, but just... Uh, okay, okay, so... So, um, crystal structure is not the same for disordered and ordered phase, but cell parameters is quite similar. And, um, you know... Okay, I explain. So, um, if you have ordering, you have... In the beginning, you have cell, disordered, it's small one. When you have ordering, the cell can... Uh, if it, for example... Uh, base central. Uh, uh, if you have ordered, it can be the cell can be increased in cell parameters. It can be twice more. But usually parameters do not coincide one to one. Uh, usually in a um, disordered uh, cell, parameters is a little bit b uh, bigger. For example, if you have. Uh, mm, uh, for disordered phase, 2.9 on strands. Uh, if you have ordered phase, it will be, uh, for example, DO3 phase. Uh, it will be 2. Point, uh, not 2.5, 82. 82. 2.9, you multiply it by 2, it should be uh, 5.8, yes? Uh, but bands do not coincide very well. Uh, uh, for disordered phase, uh, for ordered phase, it will be a little bit bigger. It will be 5.82 or 86. We detect it also, and we can understand sometimes which phase we see. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, um, maybe I didn't answer um, your question. Yes, yes, if yes, please. Uh, yes, you did. And there, there's one thing I missed the first part of the talk. Sorry mm -hmm. for that. And is iron 27 gallium? Is 27 here, here is the composition? No, uh, it's alloy. Alloy, so 27% 27 gallium. Atomic percent of gallium. I understand, atomic percent mm -hmm. of gallium. How, how, how do you mix it? I mean, the preparation of the samples. Did, mm -hmm. you, did you get the samples ready or did you make them? Uh, melt. Uh, it is in a special uh, organ furnace. Um, 
It was made uh, by our colleagues in uh, uh, Mission University of Technology and Science uh, in, uh, in Moscow. So we, we uh, as uh, uh, researchers, do not uh, prepare these samples. Okay, thank yeah. you very much. But you can find this information from uh, the articles uh, if you. Really, but it's quite usual method to prepare this kind of uh, alloys. So I have one short mm -hmm. question about. So you started from magnetostriction. So this mm -hmm. is magnetostrictive alloy, and uh, your conclusion is that uh, the phase uh, DO3 phase does not affect the um, in bulk the magnetostriction. Mm -hmm. No chance to tune magnetostrictive properties applying your results or in bulk, or you should go or some some somebody should go to nano sizes in order to tune to have the possibility to tune magnetostriction uh, applying your results um, these um, conclusions and this point of conclusions uh, was mostly about uh, understanding how uh, what is structure of these compounds um, so it's interesting that uh, some of our colleagues uh, from other research groups uh, try to understand uh, this uh, non restriction effect to maximums and so on uh, by using this uh, phase without understanding how it works ah. it's quite <laughs> uh, surprising uh, but they uh, talk that they have found this by electron diffraction and uh, uh, it should uh, influence on the high uh, magnetic restriction value of the samples and so on. So, uh, B, in, it's very interesting question. Uh, so, if we mm, don't see this kind of um, uh, uh, this kind of uh, phase uh, in uh, by widely spread methods and um, I mean, uh, neutron diffraction, not, not widely spread, but X-ray diffraction, we also don't see. I have shown this, that uh, broadening of the peaks was only on the surface layers. Mm -hmm. So, but inside of this, mm, there is no, uh, no this effect. Uh, so, can we say, if, if we have such situation, can we say that this phase exactly exists and can influence on the, uh, can affect on the so uh, big so bulk properties of a material as moving restriction? We suppose not. Uh, moreover, we explained that uh, some effects which were tried to say that it was uh, from nano, in, uh, nano infusions from this phase, but it's not from this phase, and it's only uh, concentrated on surface. Uh, so we just decline uh, by our research uh, variant of explanation. Uh, I don't know yes, what, uh, where where there is modified phase. Anyway, your results are very interesting and useful for explanation of magnetic properties, because without this uh, uh, understanding, we can, we can go, go on the wrong way. Yes, yes. the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Okay.